In the last lecture, we learned how to create a custom validator in Angular. Now, in this lecture, you're going to learn what is an async validator and how to create and use it. Creating an async validator is very similar to creating a sync validator. The only difference is that async validator must return either a promise or an observable. And remember that Angular does not provide any built-in async validators. Now, we use async validator when we need to send HTTP requests to the server to check if the data is valid. So basically, when we send an HTTP request to the server, the server might take some time in sending the response. So we need to wait for that time. And when the data is available, then only it should be validated. For that, we use async validator. Let's see how to create and use an async validator in Angular. So here we have our reactive form. Now what we want is, in this email control, we want to restrict user to use procademy at gmail.com email address. So when the user tries to register with this email address, we want to restrict him. The user should not be able to use this email address. Okay, so for that, we are going to create a custom validator. And this custom validator is going to be an async custom validator. Let's see how to create an async custom validator. Let's go to VS Code. Let's go to app component class and here let's go ahead and let's create a method. So we have learned that a validator is nothing but a method. Let's call this method email not allowed. Okay. Now this method is going to receive a parameter. Let's call it control and it is going to be of type form control. So on whichever form control we will use this validator we will receive that form control as an argument and it will be stored inside this control parameter. All right. Now we learned that when we create an async validator, it must return either a promise or an observable. So here we also need to specify the type of the value which this method is going to return. So it is either going to return a promise of any type or it is going to return an observable of any type and to use this observable we also need to import it from rxjs library all right now inside this method let's go ahead and let's create a variable and let's call this variable maybe response and to this i'm going to assign a promise okay and we also need to use the new keyword here because here we are going to create an instance of this promise and we have learned that a promise takes a callback function. And this callback function receives two parameters, the resolve callback function and reject callback function. Now inside the body of this callback function, let's go ahead and let's use set timeout function. So basically here we want to return some data after a time interval just to simulate the asynchronous behavior. Okay. So the first argument of the set timeout function is a callback function. And then the second argument is the time interval. So for time interval, let's pass 5,000 milliseconds. Now inside this callback function, inside the callback function of the set timeout, let's use if statement. So here we want to check if this control has a value equal to procademy at gmail.com. So if control dot value, if it is equal to procademy at gmail.com, in that case, we want to return a validation error. So for that, let's use this resolve method. And when this promise will be resolved from here, we want to return an error code. So let's create that error code and let's call this error code maybe email not allowed. Okay, and let's set it to true. So this is the error code which we want to return if in the email field we enter this value. Otherwise, if the user enter any other value apart from this email address, in that case, we want to make this promise resolve with the value none. So again, in the else part, let's call this resolve method again. And from here, we want to return null. So if the user enters this email address in the email field, 
this email not allowed validator will return this error code and you can see this error code in the error object of email control but if the user has entered any other value apart from this email in that case this null will be returned and the error object of the email control will be assigned with this value null okay finally let's go ahead and let's return this promise from this email not allowed method so let's say return response okay so in this way we have created an async validator now let's see how to use this validator so let's copy this validator name and we want to use this validator on the email control so here we have this email control now on this email control we are already using this required and this email validator and this required and email validators are sync validators now when we want to use an async validator on a control we can pass it as the third argument of this form control constructor so for this form control constructor the first argument is this value null the second argument is this array inside which we are specifying the sync validators and then for the third argument we can specify an async validator so here let's say this dot email not allowed with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page let me open developer console here let's clear everything let's go to element tab and here let me expand this form and let's go to email control so here we have this email control now on this email control currently we have these classes ng untouched ng pristine and ng invalid now let's go ahead and let's enter some email field here so let me select this email okay now you will notice this ng pending uh, you know css class added on this email control and after 5 seconds that ng pending changed to ng valid now let me go ahead and let me enter procademy at gmail.com so again you will notice here this ng pending has been added on this email control and after 5 seconds it has changed to ng invalid so since this email not allowed is an async validator it is going to return this email not allowed error code or this value null after 5000 milliseconds so for 5000 milliseconds we are seeing the ng pending on the email field and after 5 seconds when the control is validated it is either displaying ng valid or ng invalid based on the value which we are entering in this email control so if we are entering this email address in that case that ng pending after 5 seconds it will change to ng invalid because this validator this email not allowed validator it will not allow user to use this email address in the email field okay let's see this one more time so let me refresh the page let's go to this email control so it is inside this form group and here we have this email control so currently you will notice it has this ng untouched ng pristine and ng invalid now let me go ahead and enter an email address apart from procademy at gmail.com as soon as i enter this email for five seconds you will see ng pending and after five seconds it will change to ng valid because this email address is valid now if i go ahead and enter procademy at gmail.com again for the five seconds you will see ng pending and after five seconds it will change to ng invalid because in the email field this email address is not allowed all right so this is how you can create and use an async validator in angular this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day